Before we begin, let us start with a prayer. This is God. This is me. Put together makes us one. Bow our heads, close our eyes, let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, you are the God Almighty. You know us inside out. You know us better than we know ourselves. We are so thankful that, Lord, you have chosen us and allow us to know you through your word. Right now, we pray for your spirit to fill us so that we can know you better through your word and that, Lord, let us focus and learn and know you. Thank you so much, Lord. We want to commit this time all into Father's hand. In Jesus' name, we pray with full thanksgiving. Amen. All right, children. So, as you know, we are learning about the wilderness journey that the Israelites took. So, today, we are learning about the ninth campsite called Alush. So, this is the map of the Exodus. I think we have seen this many times about the wilderness journey. How many times did they camp in this wilderness journey? 42 times. Yes, 42 campsites in total. So, let's do, let's run through the names of the campsite together. So, we know from Ramesses they came out of Egypt and the first campsite is called Sukkot, second, Ether, third, before Migdol, fourth, Mara, fifth, Elim, sixth, by the Red Sea, seven, the wilderness of Sin, and eighth, Dovkat. And today we will be learning the ninth campsite called Alush. So, this is recorded in Numbers chapter 33, verse 13. It says, And they journeyed from Dovka and camped at Alush. So, Alush is our ninth campsite. So, first, let us learn about the meaning of the name Alush. Alush means a crowd of people, rugged land, or I will need dough. Alush, this place, it's topographically rugged, as the name suggests. As you see from the picture on the left, over here, the ground is rough and hard. Okay, so this picture over here that you see, okay, is just like the name Alush, which means rugged land. And another meaning, like, we have, like I have just stated, is I will need to. So like this picture on the right, Okay. You can see the hand pressing on the door or pulling on the door, massaging on the door. Okay. So, Alush had this three meaning, a crowd of people, rugged land, and I will need door. So, what happened at this campsite? Do you know, children, the hearts of the Israelites, they were probably becoming hard like the land of Alush because they have been eating the same manna in the same way every day. As we have learned previously, we know that they started eating manna from the seventh campsite, which is called the wilderness of sin. Yes, God sent down manna from heaven as food for them. So they, they started eating manna. And what happened? Okay, we men are all the same. So what is going to happen is like this. Right? First time when you eat something yummy. Mm, yummy, yummy. Very happy face, Marling. Okay, imagine you eat that. Okay, one meal, two meal. Okay, over consecutive days. Uh, and the third day you eat the same meal, maybe your face turns like that. Ah, okay, it's the same food again. Alright. And then you continue eating. And the next time, maybe the fifth time you eat it, you see the food, you'll be like, Ah! Same one again? Not this! And then continue. Oh, you'll be like this lady over here. <laughs> again, same food. I'm sick of eating the same thing. So this is how the Israelites felt at that time. So let's... Go through it, okay? 
we knew, like I mentioned earlier, that mana first came down in the wilderness of sin. And this mana, the bread from heaven, continued in the same manner around all the campsites. Okay, so this mana came down after they grumbled. Remember, they grumbled when their food ran out. So God notified them and then God sent the mana down, right? So children, how does mana look like? We didn't talk about the appearance of mana the last time round. So let's take a quick look now. In Numbers chapter 11 verse 7, it says, Now the mana was like coriander seed and its appearance like that of bdellium. So over here, I show you the picture of coriander and bdellium stones and this is how the mana looks like. Okay, a bit like cotton ball, right? Yeah. Then how is it taste like? So like we know mana fell down, okay. Throughout all the campsites, they have mana, right? Remember? Yeah, so how is the taste like? Is it nice? Okay, so let's find out in the Bible. So in the beginning, they just ate the mana as it is without any cooking. How does it taste? It tasted like wafers with honey as recorded in Exodus chapter 16 verse 31. Shall we read it together? Exodus chapter 16 verse 31. Exodus is the second book in the Bible. Okay, so if you have your Bible with you, do turn to it. Exodus chapter 16 verse 31. Ready? One, two, three. Now the house of Israel called its name manna. It was like coriander seed, white, and the taste of it was like wafers made with honey. Wow. Who love honey? Who love wafers? I love it, don't you? I think most of us like it, right? The taste is really good. Yes. Then what happened? Like we have seen in the picture just now. First time we eat yummy. Okay, we eat it. Maybe breakfast, lunch, dinner, and then come the second day. Breakfast, lunch, dinner. Then come the third day, the face starts to change a bit. Okay. Yeah, it's nice. Okay. And slowly, what happened? You get sick of it, isn't it? Yeah. So perhaps that was what the Israelites were feeling. But you know what, children? God know all about us. God knows us inside out. He knows us really, really, really well. You know That is why six days after the manna started coming down, God told them in Exodus chapter 16 verse 23, God taught them how to prepare and cook the manna. You see how God knows the heart of his people? Before we ask God, God knew already and God knows and then God started teaching us what to do. So, over here in Exodus chapter 16 verse 23, let's read it together. Okay, Exodus chapter 16 verse 23. Are you ready? One, two, three. Then he said to them, This is what the Lord has said. Tomorrow is a Sabbath rest, a holy Sabbath to the Lord. Bake what you will bake today and boil what you will boil and lay up for yourselves all that remains to be kept until morning. So over here we see this is God's instruction to them, teaching them to bake and boil what they have. So now we know God taught them how to prepare and cook the manna to make it to other dishes. So what did they do exactly? Let's see. In Numbers chapter 11 verse 7 to 8, it's recorded as below. Now the manna was like coriander seed and its appearance like that of bedelia. Then verse 8, the people who go about and gather it and grind it between the mill, two millstones or beat it in the mortar and boil it in the pot and make cakes with it. And its taste was as the taste of cakes baked with oil. Okay, the expression over here that I have highlighted in red, the words in red, with oil is shimen in Hebrew referring to the olive oil used to knead the dough you know when you for you to knead the dough you need to put some oil if not it's too dry right you need it so this is a hint that the israelites make cakes from manna by mixing and kneading it with oil on the basis of the meaning of alush like i've shared earlier on alush also mean i will 
need do right so it is estimated that they have begun to mix mana with oil and cook it from the time they were camping at Alush. So in conclusion, what can we learn from this campsite Alush? We see something. We see how God knows the heart of his people. Indeed, he knows everything about you and me, our thoughts, action and deed. He knows every detail about us. And do you know what, children? He knows us better than we know ourselves, like I said earlier. For example, hair. The number of hairs on your head. Do you know how many hair you have? I don't. Okay, but the Bible tells us this. In Luke chapter 12, verse 7, okay, it says, But even the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear not, therefore, ye are of more value than many sparrows. Indeed, God knows how many hands we have. This is how much God knows us. Every single detail about us, He borders. And He cares about us. And He finds them all out. And He knows and He remembers. And thus, all things in our lives are needed by God's providential hands. As we learn, who is the one who sent down mana? It is God. God, He sent down mana. And not only that, he taught how them he taught them how to cook it. Right? God knows everything about us and what we need in our lives. Just like the picture below here says in Isaiah chapter 64, verse 8. Yet, O Lord, you are our father. We are the clay, you are the potter. We are all the work of your hands. Amen. Indeed. We are the blessed ones being chosen by God. And God is needing our lives, making it to the perfect peace, you know. So let us look back, reflect upon our life today and see God's grace. God has poured out so much grace in our life. But many a times, children, we take things for granted and we forget about it. So... May we think about the grace of God upon us and let us give thanks. Alright, so let us pray now. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you. Lord, through this campsite, Alush, Lord, we see how much you care about us, how much you remember us, and that, Lord, your providence. Let us look back into our lives, Father, Lord, and see the many wonders, the many miracles, the many grace that you have bestowed upon us. We are such blessed people, Lord, that has been chosen by you. Let us count our blessing and give thanks. Lord, we desire to know you better. Help us when we are weak. Lift us up, Lord, and remind us of your word gave us the heart of thanksgiving so that Lord we see your grace and that Lord we give thanks and we draw closer to you thank you father so much for everything we love you father all this we pray in our dear Lord Jesus name with full thanksgiving amen bye bye children now let us recite the Lord's prayer to end the service Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy work will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptations, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen.